I saw something awesome. And what I saw is something that will really... It's just every single time I see stuff like this, it kind of furthers it for me, you know? Just like, oh, yeah, a lot of stuff that scientists say that it's kind of hard to, like, ver they feel like you can verify yourself, you know? A lot of it's just taking people's words for it. I understand that. But then they do something like this. They change one gene. And it turns the scales on a chicken's foot into feathers. And I look at that and I'm like, that, that's awesome. That's incredible. By tweaking a specific gene, scientists have discovered a way to permanently transform the scales on a chicken's feet into feathers. The, result, uh, the results provide new insights into the evolutionary origins from dinosaurs. Like birds, it's clear today that many dinosaurs were partially covered with feathers as well as scales. Um, a professor in the Department of Genetics and Evolution at the University of Geneva and co-author of the new uh, research, In Birds, It's Similar. So by altering this gene, we can actually expand and decrease the proportion of the body that's covered by feathers or scales depending on um, <clears throat> when this gene is act, uh, exactly expressed. Uh, to perform this genetic switcheroo, scientists in Switzerland targeted the sonic sonic hedgehog gene. What? They they targeted the sonic hedgehog gene. I is that I'm really reading that? That's what they named this gene? Oh, that's awesome. Which controls a signaling pathway that determines the development of certain characteristics while at the embryonic level. This includes the brain and spinal cord, limbs, and skin appendages, like scales and feathers, according to the study. Um, and yes, the is named after the titular character of the popular video game. <laughs> so they acknowledge that it's odd, too. Go down past the feet scrub. Do you guys like that ad? Do you, do you like this fungal toenail infection being cleaned up? Bet you do. In the labs, <laughs> scientists use a process known as egg candling, which involves using a light source to eliminate the blood vessels inside an egg. This enabled them to identify a suitable vessel to directly inject the developing embryo with a molecule that activates the SH pathway. That's what we're going to call it now, the SH gene. For the study, they use broiler chickens, which are raised for commercial meat production, according to the statement. Uh, according to a statement, Gallus Gallus domesticus. Those that just mean that it's it's domesticated chicken. Are they all the same? I don't know. I don't know. We conducted the uh, injection on day eleven, which is the precise time when scales normally arise on the embryo. Um, a postdoctoral fellow in artificial and natural evolution at the. If we perform the injection every one day, to, or even one day too late, the uh, embryo has already begun developing scales. After the eggs hatch, the scientists noticed the formation of downy juvenile feathers on the chicken's feet. This super soft feather were comparable to the feathers covering the rest of their bodies, according to the statement. The effect is really clear once they hatch, and the change lasts. Once the chickens develop the feathers, they don't go back to having scales in the, on the targeted area. The researchers... The researchers were surprised at how easy it was to shapeshift the chicken's feet. Instead, it offered the team a new understanding of how these animals evolved. Uh, feathers are a function of change. Uh, in dinosaurs, feathers could have been used to regulate the animal's internal temperature or as a colorful display. Flight came later. By changing the expression of one gene, we were able to create a cascade of development effects that triggered feathers' growth, offering new insights into the evolution of these animals. Well... If you think about it, um, feathers, that, but like downy feathers is used to insulate uh, against water. Like it makes the bird waterproof. Like, I mean, with the penguin, it's so thick and the downy feathers literally like hold in all their heat. It's like when you break open a, um, uh, the nature corn dog, the, uh, the, the cattail, <laughs> when you break open a cattail and it poofs open, it's like that. And that's just a bunch of these pincushion feathers together, and it traps in all that heat. And, you know, 
but at the same time, if a dinosaur lived in a cooler environment and they had downy feathers all over them, which a lot of fossils indicate that they do, and there are literally like amber casings with dinosaur tails in them. Like you can see the feathers, you can see that it's it's nuts. All the stuff that is coming out over the past few weeks. And wait, what what related domesticated chickens could wipe out their wild ancestors by having sex with them? That's all I saw was that last little bit. <laughs> this this okay, this is live science. I gotta keep on coming back to this site. It's very interesting. But um yeah, uh I completely lost track of what i was saying but yeah you know oh it keeps them warm you know it, it and there there's plenty of evidence that a lot of them did not all of them like they might have gone a little too over the top by making jurassic or uh, t-rex look like a you know a chicken you know that's that's may not be exactly true not every dinosaur did but plenty of them did especially raptors which i believe raptors eventually turned into birds that like that Arctiopteryx was considered like the first bird, even though it had four legs and looked, you know, probably crawled around more than anything. But that's the point: is that eventually they became birds. And I just made a video about um, uh, a short video about how um, the only, you know, the reptiles alive today um, that that are warm-blooded are birds, you know, and uh, chicken is no different, and you know. Most people don't think about the fact that chickens have scales on their feet. They just think of it as skin because it's so soft. People think of scales as like rough, hard, like, like, you know, they, they think of lizards and snakes. Most lizards and snakes aren't even like a lot of them are very soft. You can make leather out of them. Like it's, it's not like it's a very hard, some snakes are very rough, but not all of them are. And it literally is a row of scales on the feet of a chicken. It's, I mean, that's, that's what a, that's a dinosaur foot right there. Like, that's all that is. Look at, I guarantee, that's, that's what they, that's what they are. And so it's really cool to be able to see that. That's an awesome picture right there. I mean, there's still some scalation on it. On the back end, like these larger ridges, you know, still have some scales. But like, all the soft, I wonder if they keep on growing and like fall out and, you know, they replace them like they do with the rest of their body when they, you know, they get their adult plumage. Very interesting. But I just figured I'd go over that. I thought it was... I don't know. Uh, the the gene editing stuff... I don't necessarily know what to make of it. Because I know if the more that they mess around with editing these genes... You know, it could be for people too. We could literally like save people's lives with, you know... You know, if they're born with a certain disease or, you know... Syndrome or whatever that just is, you know, you just edit a little bit of their genes, and but then you know, at the same time, that's people saying that you play God. It's it's a hard one because like at the same time, like half of like medicine today, you know, you ask people a thousand years ago the stuff that we're able to do now that we still do, and they'd be like, they would say the same thing. They would call it witchcraft. They would say it would be playing God. So how is editing genes any different? Like, it is it the next step in medicine? Or is it too far? So, like, I think overall it's probably best for humanity to do that. But you got to start somewhere and making chickens grow feathers on their legs might be something. I don't know. What do you think down below? You think I'm wrong in that assessment? Or uh, am I just uh, thinking too much into it and just this needs to be just a cool thing? <laughs> I don't know. Let me down know down below. Uh if you would like, check out my Patreon. Uh, it'd be patreon.com slash DNA Reptiles. I got the Discord up, posting videos there as well that you can't find anywhere else but there. And again, the Discord, you can come and chat and we can have a good old time. But um, let, me, let me know what you think about this down below. i really like to hear it. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. See you on the next one. Stay wild.